Welcome to Cardiac Anatomy for Radiology. This is part of a 10 part series where we're going to look at the imaging anatomy of the heart. It's useful for anyone who's sitting their FRCR examinations or anyone who's interested in brushing up their cardiac imaging anatomy. This is part six and we're going to talk about standard views. So there are standard ways that we view the heart and this is mostly based on the fact that imaging developed from echocardiography and there are standard views that you can acquire with echocardiography. These are called the two chamber, three chamber and four chamber views of the heart. Magnetic resonance imaging is set up very similar to echocardiography and you get these standard views of the heart. There are several others particularly specialised to look at the right heart or particular valves but the two, three and four chamber are the bread and butter of what we do. However, when it comes to CT, we can look at the heart in any angle we want and things can get very confusing very quickly. So when we always come back to these basic views, we have a reference point and a comparison can be made between different modalities. Another thing that's very important at the moment with the advent of TAVI valve implantation is standard views for aortic valve measurement. So we'll cover that in this section as well. So first of all, we're going to talk about the four chamber view. So this view sees all four chambers of the heart. So on CT, in many cases, the basic axial view, you can see all four chambers. So we've got on this image, right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. However, for it to be a proper four chamber view, you do need to adjust it just slightly so that you can actually see the full extent of all of those four chambers. So that's the first view, the four chamber view. The second view is a two chamber view. So this involves turning your axes so that one is going all the way down to the apex of the heart and just adjusting slightly on your short axis view. And this gives you a two chamber view. And the two chambers that we're talking about here are the left ventricle and the left atrium. So this is an important view because it gives you a good view of the mitral valve in action and of the left ventricular muscle contracting. So this is the two chamber view. The three chamber view you can see three chambers as the name implies. So here we've got the left ventricle, the left atrium and the left ventricular outflow tract. This isn't really a chamber of the heart like atrium and ventricles but this is really important so you can see the aortic valve in the aorta and the left ventricular outflow tract and the association with the mitral valve and this is a very useful image for looking at function and measurements. So to get from the two chamber to the three chamber we turn this short axis view, we turn the axis round just slightly so that the left ventricular outflow tract and aorta come into view. So there are some important measurements that we need to do and we, we talk about when it comes to the aorta and the aortic valve. Now I'm going to describe them on the three chamber view here because it's a good way to work out and understand what the measurements are that we're talking about. In actual fact we don't do our measurements on this three chamber view anymore because with CT we can really get into the exact plane that we're looking for um, using several more complicated steps that I'm not going to cover today. But this is a good way of visualising what we're talking about. So when we come out of the left ventricle, this first yellow line here, this is the left ventricle outflow tract. It's the outflow of the left ventricle into the aortic valve complex. This next line here, right up against the valve, this is the aortic valve annulus. Then outside of the valve, this widest point here, this is the sinus of Valsalva. And then this next line here where the aorta narrows again, this is the sinotubular junction. So this picture here, this is the aortic valve in its nice Mercedes-Benz sign. And we've got this bit here, which is the cusp, and this bit here, the dark lines, these are the commissures of the Mercedes-Benz. This blue line here measures the cusp 
to commissure distance, which is a measurement of the sinus of Valsalva. So just a word on the naming of the aortic valve cusps. This is the aortic valve in it with its nice Mercedes-Benz sign. And coming off this side here, we have the left coronary artery. So this cusp here is called the left coronary cusp. Up here, we've got the right coronary artery. So this one is called the right coronary cusp. Even though it's at the front, it's called the right coronary cusp. And this third cusp here that doesn't have any coronary arteries, it's called the non-coronary cusp. So that's it for cardiac imaging anatomy for today. Looking forward to seeing you next time.